Greetings and welcome to Spirit Knox for Brooklyn Mosaic. So I wanted to come on today because, you know, I started talking to you all as my journey um, was really just taking off. Like I started to experience things that I could really describe and understand where it was coming from. But I just wanted to step back because the very beginning of my journey, um, you all heard me talk about like it started with a knock. And at that time I was in um, the States. And when I heard that knocking sound, I didn't understand what was happening. So check out the video where I talk about that. But more importantly, once I realized what was happening, I started to feel a need to prepare my space. And that's what I wanted to talk about because if you're at the beginning of this journey, one of the things you wanna do is to have an altar. And if you don't have an altar, um, you know, whatever that looks like for you. For me, it was finding a small table. Um, I used my nightstand, right? I cleaned it off, you know, washed it down. Some people like to use a brand new table, something that doesn't have any other energy on it. Um, but I use my nightstand and I put up pictures of my loved ones that had passed away. Um, I also had some pictures of myself, like with my loved ones. Um, I knew I had heard about having uh, water and a candle and maybe like a white towel, but I wasn't really sure. And then it occurred to me that I, a friend of mine kind of just dropped into my head. A friend who I had been speaking to kind of off and on in like our weekly girls groups. And I said, you know what? I feel like that sister talked about having an altar. So I called up my friend and I said, listen, I've been contemplating doing this and I don't want to do it wrong. And I don't really know how to get started. And I spoke with her and she was so helpful. And she basically was like, listen, do what comes to your heart, follow your intuition. But when I got started, I had a table, I had a white cloth, I had two candles to balance, and I had a glass of water and some pictures, right? Okay, so we talked. I said, okay, I guess I'm on the right track so far. Like for me starting out, I didn't want to offend anyone. I also didn't want to conjure up anything that I didn't know how to deal with. So I wanted to make sure I was doing it properly. Um, you know, there's all these fears and it's so interesting because we will do the things we're conditioned to do, like go to church, light a candle, pray at the altar, eat matzah, you know, um, eat crackers, drink the blood of Jesus, all this stuff. And we don't think twice about that. But when it comes to how we honor our ancestors, which is different from religion, right? Because we're talking religion and we're talking spirituality, two different things. People practice both. Some people practice one or the other. Um, so for me, I don't have a strict religion. Um, my mom, of course, was like Baptist. You know, my dad's people were Episcopalian. So I have those religions that I'm familiar with. I went to Catholic schools, but spirituality, where you are in your spirit and how you relate to the divine, th that's a little different. So I didn't want to offend. I didn't want to do it wrong. I didn't want to mess up. So I spoke to someone with a little more experience who you know, was a little abrasive, but, you know, you try to be, use discernment and pull what you can. And one of the things she said to me was, do not put a picture of yourself on an altar with your relatives. You cannot be on that same altar. You can have a separate altar for yourself. But when you're honoring the deceased, when you're honoring those that have transitioned, you want to do that separately. So that was helpful to me and I hope it's helpful to you. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you to do your own research because as time has gone on, I've tried, I've learned about ancestral money, which I didn't know anything about. I learned about um, ancestral foods, like putting food on your altar. Some people put cooked food, some people put, you know, fruits. 
Um, some people put flowers. I found that my ancestors like flowers, jasmine in particular, right? Um, it, there's so many things you can do. Um, I also put things that belonged to my ancestors on my altar, right? Like a magnet, a pen, seashells, like little things like that. I also put things that I believe are left for me in the, in nature. Like I was walking one day, I walked out to the water, no problem. I walked back, there's this huge black feather there. And I was like, okay, like the signs and symbols, you know what I'm saying? So we are all into different things. You have to do what feels right by you. So I put little things like that on my altar. Um, I try to keep my altar clean. I, you know, I change my water out. I don't leave spoiled foods on my altar. Um, I keep the area around the altar clean. I change the candles on my altar. Like everyone does things differently. You will know what works for you. But in starting this journey, if you are seeking guidance from your ancestors, I would say set up a special place for them. The other thing is I used to have it like in my room, like where I sleep, like right next to me as I, you know, into, into the bathroom. Some people don't like altars in their room. Some, for some people, it disturbs their sleep. Other people like to have like it in a, a closet or a designated area in their living room, you know, or it, it's up to you wherever you're comfortable. Some people put it at the entrance of their homes. So you have to do what works for you. Um, people don't really talk about it for some reason. Like there are some people who are in certain um, spiritual practices that talk about it, but generally, you know, you'll find people acting really funny about it. Like it's not to be talked about, but there are those of us who want the information and that's who this video is for. So early in my journey, I knew I, I needed to have an altar. That was something that I did immediately um, to for guidance and for instruction, you know, um, and not anyone's going to pop up and just tell you what to do, but you will find that you feel protected by your ancestors, that you know they are supporting you. You know that in the ancestral realm, realm but sometimes we don't know that in the physical realm, right? We feel alone, like we're doing things on our own, like we're going through things and no one understands, but that's not the case. They understand, they are supporting you, they are rooting for you. And so get your altars set up and I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I'm trying to think there's anything else I, that I forgot, but those are the main things. You can always do your research to find out more. You can even check into your own ancestral lineage and find out what works for you, depending on where you are from, your culture, your practice. But one of the main things I did was to get an altar set up. I know I also felt like my altar was very private, right? I didn't want anyone touching anything on my altar, uh, taking pictures of my altar, adding anything to my altar, sitting at my altar. Like those things were not an option for me. Um, for me, that was supposed to be my ancestors' home in my home, right? A place that they felt recognized. So you can think about how you want to proceed with that. I hope this video was helpful to you and will give you a start in starting your altar. Feel free to leave any questions and if I can answer them, I will. And if I can't, I will refer you to someone that can. Thank you for joining me for Spirit Knox for Brooklyn Mosaic.